Welcome to In The Zone. I'm Xavier Johnson, and today we will be talking about NBA improving this year's NCAA tournament and who could reach the Final Four in Atlanta. Stay tuned, and In The Zone starts right now. I'm Andre Cunningham. We have a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Finals between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Toronto Raptors in Toronto. Kicking, as we're kicking off the game, Giannis enter the Kubo comes down the court and drives and dribbles out for the shot to Brooke Lopez for the three in the corner to start off. There, the Bucks are up three zero. Up three zero. Now the Bucks dish it out. Giannis dish it back out to Brooke Lopez for another corner three to take the lead right back. Still in the first quarter. Um, Comes down, dribbles, cuts to the basket to Eric Busso for the tough layup and the foul to keep the lead. Bucks with the ball. Dribbles it out, step back for the step back three. Is off, but the putback comes down on Giannis. Now it's like he's looking for a foul. That ties up the game now 22-22. Toronto comes back, dribbles back down the court for the pass down the middle for the dunk. Toronto is still holding on to the lead. As they hold... If they hold the ball, Fred Van Leet steps up and takes the tough three and still, and still makes it to extend Toronto's lead. Toronto's still with it. This should have for the easy dunk also on Giannis. Giannis probably is not too happy about that. Toronto comes down and gets Giannis. I mean, uh, the Bucks get the score. Now the uh, Raptors come down. Kyle Lowry gets blocked by Brooke Lopez. Giannis with the ball, dribbles down the court and dishes the tough pass to the inside to Chris Middleton for the, for the easy layup. Then they have now taken the lead. Um, uh, the Bucks shot is off, but he dishes right back to the corner for another three. They extend their lead to, to be up by 10 points. Nine, excuse me. Bucks, um, Giannis dishes out for the tough reverse layup to extend the lead by double digits once again. The Raptors come down, take the this, take this tough under, un, up and under layup, still makes his in draws the foul. The Bucks miss again. The Raptors get the rebound and come down the court in a fast break. One against three, but he still closes. He still finds his way through traffic for the tough layup. They're now making a run. Giannis with the step back, th step back jumper, showing that he's still that he does have skill with the go along with his size. Eric Bussell with the ball as he dribbles, dribbles, uh, comes down the basket, comes down the middle of the paint for the tough layup to extend the lead back in. Chris Milton passes it out for the tough, for the three in the corner. Giannis showing that he can shoot as well. The Bucks will take this game 108-97. We have a tough showdown tonight between the, at the Staples Center between Zion Williamson and LeBron James as the Lakers take on the New Orleans Pelicans. To start off the game, LeBron James with a nice assist to Danny Green as he flushes down the three to start off the first three points of the game. Following that play, Zion, Alonzo Ball with a full court pass to Zion, Brandon Ingram who makes a nice two-hand dunk. Missed three with a nice rebound as Zion was, as Lonzo Ball gets a nice pass to Zion Williamson who makes a two-hand monster slam. Nice put, put down as KCP makes a thunderous one-hand dunk over Zion. Brandon Ingram makes a nice buzzer beater shot to end the first quarter. Zion Williamson loses the ball was um, the Lakers bring it down court with a nice pass to LeBron James as he, as he makes a nice poster one-hand slam. AD with a nice turnaround two-hand dunk as the Lakers are up against the Pelicans. LeBron James one-on-one -on -one with Zion Williamson that we've all been waiting for and makes a nice three right in his face to show the young buck that he still has some game. And LeBron again with another three as the Lakers are up against the Pelicans 75-61 in the bottom of the third. Dribbling down the court, the nice um, layup as the P 
Pelicans are trying to um, close the score against the Lakers. KCP with a nice layup to put the Lakers ahead of the Pelicans once again, 88 to um, 84. LeBron James with a nice layup as, Zion, as Lonzo Ball brings it down the court with a nice steal by the Lakers and a clutch lay, um, layup by number four as the Lakers are ahead once again against the Pelicans. Zion Wilson with a two-hand put down and Brandon Ingram loses the ball as Anthony Davis passes it to Danny Green who then again passes it to LeBron James with a nice windmill two-hand slam as the, Lake, as the Lakers beat the Pelicans 118 to 109. Now, after watching all this good NBA basketball, we got some good discussion questions to talk about. Um, so first, I want to start off with, do you believe that Zion Williamson is living up to the hype since coming back from injury? You know, either one of y'all can go. Well, I think he's been proving that he is one of the best uh, rookies that are out there right now in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be able to catch up to John Morant for the uh, – rookie of the year, but he's definitely showing that he is to be uh, looked at. I believe that um, Zion is taking control of his team and showing him that he's not just a dunker, that he can actually shoot as well and he can rebound and clearly he affects his team and people know his name, not just because of what he did in college, but because of the way he plays and that he's not scared of nobody and that he can put up some numbers as he did yesterday night against LeBron. Yeah, yeah let's say New Orleans is a completely different team with Zion on the court than they were without him. Yeah, I saw him get one of those rebounds. <laughs> it's like he could have jumped over over the top of the backboard by how he jumped. But um, I do believe he is living up to hype, in my opinion. He's showing a case in that he's not just an athletic freaking nature, that he is actually a good facilitator mm -hmm. as well as shooting threes. But uh, to continue on, um, do any of you agree with John Moran's recent comments that Russell Westbrook is highly disrespected around the league? Xavier, I think you like Russell Westbrook a lot. So well, I, not just that I'm a Russell Westbrook fan, but I personally believe that he doesn't give enough credit because a lot of players, unlike him, he goes 100% every game. He's very physical. Well, like the old heads like to say that a lot of these players couldn't play back then because it's so physical. I believe that Russell is one of those players that actually could because he, he's not scared to go into the paint. He always gives 100%. And, those triple doubles aren't don't come easy. Like he, his teammates don't just give them to him. He actually has to get rebounds, and he clearly um, assists and helps his teammates out. Mm -hmm. Let's say he is pretty cri um, very criticized. Probably one of the most criticized players in the NBA compared to like next to LeBron James. <laughs> Definitely have to say that. I could say that is there he being dis disrespected? Probably. I would agree with uh, Xavier saying that he is very like underrated still. Even though he puts up all these triple doubles, I believe that, um, that he should gain a little bit more respect than some other players they've been giving him. Yeah, I know Russell has a very, you would say, a high motor. He has plays mm -hmm. with intense energy constantly, and that really does showcase in how he plays. Like, I remember seeing when he was a Thunder and KD without injury, stuff like that, about he felt, I felt like he was one of the people that was always going 100%. Yeah. Constantly, mm -hmm. always trying to make a play, hustle back on defense. So, I, yeah, he definitely does get The only reason why I think maybe some of these players might be disrespecting him is also could be because of his like attitude, because <laughs> he does have a tendency to rub uh, some of his uh, players the wrong way. Yeah. And, his, <laughs> and his shooting, I feel like while he puts up a lot of points, his percentages aren't as high as they should be considering the amount of shots he takes. And also, like the main thing is that as much as he does on the team, you still have to get the win and. As we know, in the playoffs, he has, he's fallen short a numerous of times, but hopefully with the Rockets, him and James Harden can find some way to make it further on to the playoffs this year and maybe win, even win the title. Yeah, the West, mm -hmm. yeah, the West is very tough, yeah. very tough. But, you know, let's see once he gets the playoffs, they're really up for it. To continue on going back to the East now, are the, Milwaukee, are the Milwaukee Bucks favorites to win or would you take the field? Um, I feel like they're the favorite to win. But at the same time, they were last year, and we mm. saw what happened when they played against the Raptors. Me, I believe that if they, get, if they go with this momentum that they have now, yes, they can. And if um, Giannis Antetokounmpo is as focused as he is and remains that in the playoffs, nothing can stop them. But at the same time, they got to watch out for those Heat. 
because mm-hmm. everyone knows that yeah. Jimmy Butler is a dog and he's not scared of nobody. And just because they're not getting the recognition, we know that they can beat teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Heat do need uh, our team to look out for for, when for the Milwaukee Bucks because they could give them one heck of a, a series between the two because that, that's a series that I would definitely want to look out for. Probably the most exciting series of the playoffs for the East. Yeah, I, yeah, I like Giannis' mentality a lot. And if it, if it would end up being him and the Bucks, that would be a very interesting one. Yeah. Sixers should have kept him. But mm. when we come back, we'll be, we'll be over on our winners and dark horse Dark Horse for instance for this year's NCAA tournament. Stay tuned. Thank you. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met our niece, my mom, as I'll call her. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being a support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who have my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people would think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Why are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. Welcome back. We have an SEC matchup as Kentucky Wildcats are taking on Texas A&M in College Station Arena. Right off the tip with a nice steal, Quentin Jackson steals it and puts it in for the first, three, for the first two points of the game. As you see, Ashton Havens dribbling up with a nice pass to Emmanuel Quickly who makes the nice triple. Puts Kentucky 7-8. to eight. The rebound back with a nice three on Kentucky against Texas A&M. 15 to 11, Kentucky with the ball. With a nice dunk right over number 32 on Texas A&M. That definitely sent the message to that team that they're ready for this game. Uh, number three on Kentucky with a nice pass, um, with a nice shot, but he missed with a nice putback by, by Kentucky. As they're up 44 to 32 now in the second half. Texas A&M taking it down the lane with a nice three. The ball again, Texas A&M with a nice alley-oop slam for number 32, brings the game closer. 57 to 44, it's Kentucky. Texas A&M with the ball, the nice dribble, and a nice three right over Kentucky as they drain the shot. With a 10-point game, Texas A&M with the ball once again, another three, bring it down to seven points. Two minutes left, Kentucky with the ball, Dribbling it out, crossover, a nice shot, Tech, uh, Kentucky with the score. 
posted up. Nice three by Kentucky as they're up as they remain up against Texas A and M. Texas A M trying to come back against Kentucky with a nice jam by number thirty two. Texas A and M number one with a nice three right against Texas, Kentucky as the game gets closer. But unfortunately, Texas A and M falls short to Kentucky as the score is sixty nine to sixty with the win by number eight Kentucky. We have Duke taking on Wake Forest in this intriguing AACC matchup before the, before the ACC tournament. Starting second half, Vernon Carey knocks down a wide open jumper. After a missed shot by Demon Deacons, Trey Jones gets the rebound and passes full court to Carey again for the slam. Coming up right here. <laughs> he made a duck, made him miss too. Duke in the lead, Wake Forest trying to make something happen. They drive, he drives to the court, dishes out for the three. To cut it down by to nine points, Wake Forest trying to make a comeback. They're only down by five now, but Duke makes another, misses a three, air balls it, but his teammate saves him and gets the tough and one layup to pull it back away. Wake Forest comes down, has another miss, but to get the officer rebound for the putback and the foul. Wake Forest still trying to make sure to stay alive in this game. Duke has it, they try to dribble, he loses, turns the ball over, Wake Forest on a fast break. With the one-on-one, -on -one, he makes a tough layup. Duke back at it, with it again. A tough, a tough um, um, matchup with the ball, but Wake Forest gets it, comes out, of, comes out, try to make something happen. He takes the tough leaning three, makes it, ties the game up 79-79 to go into overtime. Wake Forest has a lead in overtime as Duke tries to make something happen. Duke gets the, gets the tough layup to cut it down to only down by two with 30 seconds left. Duke takes a timeout. Duke gets the ball back again as they're now down by four once again. Tick makes another tough three, makes it only down by 16 seconds now. Wake Forest trying to hold on to the lead. Wake Forest with it, dribble with Taylor off the, off the pick and roll. Makes a tough three to pull back away. They're now second overtime. Wake Forest still keep holding on to the lead. Make the tough pull up jumper, pull back away. They're now up by eight. Duke trying to make something happen. They, they, uh, Wake Forest plays keep away and gets the nice dunk to close, out the, to close it out. They, Wake Forest takes the game over Duke 113 to 101. That's a big win there. <laughs> Very big win. win. So, uh, start off going back to basketball, going back to Duke again. With Duke and Virginia and you and um, North Carolina struggling this year, will there even be an ACC, ACC team in the Final Four? Well, I think it might be a little too early to judge, even though, like, because some of these teams like UNC and Duke and uh, Virginia are all like teams that usually like they do well in the regular season and then when uh, like they make it to the uh, to the national tournament it seems like they step up their game even higher than they have been in the regular season and you never know because sometimes they might get eliminated by some number 18 or they get or they can go all the way to the sweet 16 or the final four it's just kind of nature of the game yeah, I agree with you. I believe that, I feel like their coaches will talk to them and realize that like, even though that they're like all well-known teams that they got to start taking some of these games seriously because yeah, I believe that most likely Duke or UNC will make it to the playoffs, but I feel like if they keep losing that their seeds will affect that, that their playoff seed spots will affect because of all these losses, but I feel like they'll make it and they'll probably do well. Yeah, first I thought about, I'm like, I'm like, it's, it's Duke. In, in North Carolina, yeah, so they're gonna you know, be it's like unless unless they really to me really fall off and do something shocking. Usually they're they're almost kind of like how the Patriots usually were, just always up there. So mm -hmm. Yeah, but at it, the same time, it's it's college playoffs. Anything could happen. They they could all get upset before you make it into the Final Four. Yeah, that Which could be definitely happen as well too. too. It always happens every year. So maybe, something always happens. Maybe that would be a good shakeup. Just see something maybe. different happen. But um, to continue on. Who will be the sleeper team in the NCAA tournament? Hmm. I think uh, one of them might be pretty good is uh, Baylor has been doing really well this season. And so as Michigan State has always been a team to look at, always in the 
in the regular season. They always seem to be ranked and beating teams that they need to beat. So I think they could do a big splash in the national tournament. I haven't really been watching it that much lately, but I believe that a team like Ohio State, who started off really hot, and I don't know if they're doing well right now, but I feel like they can still come back with that same energy that they did in the beginning of the season and take a few teams down that they weren't expected to beat. That's a new one. Um, yeah, Ohio State definitely just jumps out, to, jumps out at me. But um, I have heard a good amount about Baylor. Yeah, so um, I won't be surprised if Baylor actually pulls some types of upsets. Mm -hmm. they, they always seem I think like they're in the they're, top 10 right now. Will yeah, like upset they, then? It's top 10? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe just for the season in terms of would you expect them to be top 10? Yeah, know? I get what you're saying. So that that might be a surprise there. Um, I've, been, I've been surprised that Dayton's like number three ranked right now. <laughs> Which, that, that's pretty shocking that, to me. That is definitely a shocker. Uh, Dayton, I don't know if I even usually hear of them even being up there usually. I, know, I knew them from like certain basketball, uh, that in like college basketball, they've done well pre previously. At one time, I was lucky enough to pick Duke to beat Dayton, well, Dayton to beat Duke one time, which I really was like, <laughs> I felt good with my brackets, but, <laughs> but um, I was surprised because they're usually a team that maybe just makes it by in the tournament yeah, yeah. and make mm -hmm. it, they would be like a really low rank. But this time, they really came out this year surprisingly well this time. And uh, I, will not, I was definitely not expecting that going into this year. <laughs> okay. So we, when we return, we'll be back to have our final four picks. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met Narnice, my mom, as I call her. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being a support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who had my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Why are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. Welcome back. Continuing on with March Madness, everyone wants to know who is going to make the Final Four and who would be upset. So now continue on. We're just going to talk about who we're going to have for our Final Fours. Uh, it was the, um, so last year was all about Zion Williamson being a best prospect. Who is the best mm -hmm. prospect in the NBA draft this year just before we even get to the Final Fours? Mm -hmm. Right now at the moment, who do you think? Um, I'm, uh, I'm not too sure about that one. I'm going to say, like, I haven't really kept too much of the tabs, but, 
in that t shirt. You wanted to say somebody from Duke or North Carolina? <laughs> that's how, you know, that's how it always is anyway. Let's, so let's, I, just, I, let's just keep it to the simple one. Somebody from Duke and North probably Carolina. Probably Duke or Carolina. Yeah, that's yeah, how it always is. The point guard on same North Carolina. Um, forget his name. But yeah, point guard on North Carolina. I think he's bad. He's going to do really good. Yeah, there's, there's always somebody that would jump out to us and at the same time. Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony. Yeah, Cole Anthony. I feel like it's really well. I have heard that name before. Yeah, he's he's a like he's an interesting prospect. I feel like so far, he's, he's right now predicted to be one of the number one prospects. We can't forget about my boy LaMelo Ball. <laughs> we can spend the rest of the time talking about that, man. But matter of fact, how I think LaMelo Ball is compared to his brothers? Is he going to be the one to jump out now, comparison? Some people have said that they think he's more talented than Lonzo was. What team does he play for? He played, oh. he played in Australia. Oh, Australia. he plays in Australia. Yes, I personally he's... think that he's a better shooter, but I feel like I wouldn't compare them because they don't play the same. Um, Lamelo is more aggressive to, um, towards um, the game, and Lonzo is more of like he passes the ball more. He tries to feed his teammates first. But as we've seen this year compared to last year, He's putting up more numbers with his shots, and his, as you can tell, his form has gotten better. And I feel like right now his team's successful and we're doing pretty well with the Pelicans. So we'll have to see once they both get in the league and see mm-hmm. if they even play each other, maybe on the same team at some point. Yeah, but you know they're going to be instantaneous because you're just going to be, like, compared all the time. When they, <laughs> it's just it's just going to happen, it's like destiny. Let's just hope the dad to jump out the wet works again and be like, I, my son could beat my son. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Uh, no. So... Continue on going back to college basketball again. Um, do you have any teams in the Big Ten? In the Big Ten specifically, do you think that can do something this year? Ohio State is definitely the yes. one that I think Michigan State as well are probably the two that are going to do the most in the Big Ten that is going to do in the national tournament. I'd pick Ohio State as well, but I'm going to change it to put Michigan, not Michigan State, simply because Michigan State always has a good run, but then they end up choking and. <laughs> But I feel like uh, Michigan does too, but at the same time, I feel like they got a good recruiting class this year, and I feel like they're a better team, and they might upset like they did last year, like with that buzzer beater three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we all remember. Yes, we definitely all remember that one. So with that, with the Big Ten, that can tie back into what we think about the Final Four. So who do? what teams do you have for the Final Four? Pacific just well, simply just jumping out right now. Well, G- uh, Gonzaga, of course, because Gonzaga always somehow like runs the table all the time, <laughs> it seems, and always makes the Final Four, the Sweet 16, or whatever. So I have to have them on the list because it just seems like they're just always at the top of their game when it comes to March. Um, so there's Gonzaga. Um, anybody else like Kansas, Kentucky? Kansas, yes. Kansas always seems to, is one of those teams that always seems to run the table. And I feel like, once again, they always have good years. I don't think they've ever really have a bad year. The only team that so far has been a bad year is UNC, which they're having a shockingly bad year. Like, they're having some of the most losses I've seen them take in my entire life. So it's kind of like, it, I, that's one, and one thing that I really, I really was surprised early in the season was how many losses the UNC was taking right away. And them going unranked at one point in the year, it's like, and they're yeah. still like unranked. Which, mm. when was the last time they did that? I don't know, was it probably before Michael Jordan or something? Probably, maybe. Yeah. Um, any other teams in your opinion, Xavier? Uh, I, my team, Kentucky. I feel like, number one, they're a good team. And also, I feel like number one reason why I think they're going to make it far in the college playoffs is because I think John Calipari is tired of <laughs> always getting like upset by bad teams or always look um, being known as like the lesser team when it comes to Duke, UNC, and Kentucky. They're always looked at as like the less team that always gets good players but can't do nothing with them mm. while, they're in, while they're in college. But they end up doing good in the league for some reason. Where I always think it's funny. Maybe mm-hmm. better fundamentally, yeah. better fundamentally, just for more NBA ready. Even yeah, though might not a, jump out on college. I just feel like they need. To, I feel like they need. They need a win. They need. They need to win the championship. And you prove everybody wrong. Yeah. So yeah. So that's good. Some good ones like Kansas, Gonzaga, Kentucky, Duke, um, so Baylor. So yeah. This is gonna be an interesting March Madness. It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> so going back. It always is. <laughs> that's all for the. That's all the time that we have for in the zone. I'm Andre Cunningham. And I'm Xavier, and you have a great week, Millersville.